James Crazy. That's me! Hey everybody, welcome back to James Plays Tony Hawk's Underground 2. We've got ourselves a little triple feature today. We're starting off with Atlanta in the PSP version. Then we're going to switch over to the PS2 version for Boston, and then back to the PSP version for the final time for Kyoto. Now, like Vegas, we're going to be doing eight goals in our first run, but not because it's really fast or anything like that. I, I'm struggling a lot with this level, and doing eight missions in that first run, it just kind of flows better than avoiding one of the missions. But yeah, we are going to have some problems in this level uh, or, or hopefully we're not going to have those problems but this is an outside level there's cars that drive around and they're on a timer and we're going to be going back and forth across a road at the exact same time that there are cars driving across it it's going to be a little bit of a pain but hopefully we will persevere Okay, first things first. We're going behind the fountain and hitting the first pigeon stall. These are the same gaps that we found in story mode, so we already know where they are. And I just want to get my multiplier up a little bit before we drop down. Because this is going for score as well. Slow things down as we cross the danger street, hit that peach cart, and go back into the danger street. And start doing some more specials. Now... Freeze frame! Across the street from us right now is another pigeon stall. It's the power lines. But it's a very narrow window on where that gap registers. What I found works best is these two yellow flowers in this planter here. If you go across the street straight from where those are you will be set up perfectly to hit that window if you do a stall. So here we are. Beautiful. Uh, I'm going to drop before that car tries to drive by. And we will just kind of sneak behind it. And do a spine transfer into here. And we got all our score points. Next up, another peach cart. And we're just going to do a heel flip over that spine transfer. And head on out of here over to the parking garage where we get yet another pigeon stall. Boom. Head on down and we're going to go towards the, the little mini mall plaza. Yet another... Oh, just missed it. There we go. So that's three. Go in here. Make our way down to this courtyard. And there is yet another one. Go through those doors, and we hit the last one. Run back inside. And hopefully, maybe we can do this. There we are. It's always better to just take that mo- Ooh, that's not good. Always take that moment to set yourself up, because if you mess up and go into a grind or something like that, that just it's going to waste more time. Alright. Hit that pigeon stall. We're going for combo. We're going after the buzzer here. There we are. And I'm going to slow things down. This is a relatively simple line here. You just got to keep your grind going and cut that corner there. And boom. Phew. I got real scared when I bailed up those stairs. Uh, yeah, very tight time for me to pull all that off. Worrying about those cars going across the street. Whew, a lot of stuff. So I wasn't doing eight missions because it was easy or anything. It was just the most convenient. I could have probably skipped combo at the end and done that on the next run, 
since that was very isolated, but I don't know. The uh, What we've got left can be a little bit spread out, and there can be a few problems, so giving myself a little bit of extra time to make up for any errors, it just works out better for me. Like I said, not doing this because it's easy. It, I, I'm actually making it harder for myself, I think, but the second run might might uh, might be worth it all right for the rest of our business we're starting off by heading in the direction of the statue because our first stat point is behind it you may have caught a glimpse of it when we were doing our pigeon stalls Head over to the plaza and get the E in skate. We're kind of working backwards at the start here. Now, for a little bit of a sneaky trick. Boom. I'm going to pause and talk about that. You may have seen in the first run that there was a stat point inside the plaza. I deliberately ignored it. And that's what we got just now. The stat icons float a little bit up and down, and you can manage to get the stat point from above because it'll float up and kind of clip through the ground just enough for that collision. So, a little sneaky trick. Now we don't have to go all the way through there for just that one stat point. Moving on. There's the T on this roof, and we're going to stop turn around and look up. Stat point floating in the air. Just go off the ramp for it. Turn back around and go in this door to hit the rooftops. A few spine transfers and we get ourselves another stat point. Head back down. Do not go in the door, but instead turn. And there is our secret tape. We just need to get some good air with the spine transfers. I'm going to get off my board so I land on the roof instead of going over the roof. And I land right on it. There's our A, and we have over 40 seconds for the last little bit that we have to do here, which is beautiful, actually. Now, the S is right here on this awning. We're going to start things off just like we did for combo, but I'm going to slow things down. Oh. Especially because I'm going the wrong way. Alright. Need to jump over to this power line. Then we need to jump and switch to a different power line. And slowing things down is not only good for you guys to be able to see it, but it's also good for me where I can time it. Now, final thing right above the doorway to the American Education Center is our last stat point. And we've done everything in this level. And I think that calls for a victory 900, because that was difficult. <sighs> now, if I had gone and gotten that stat point, like, from underneath, that would have taken me another, like, 10 to 15 seconds of time. And instead, I just used that to just take a moment, explain things let you see what was happening. Because this isn't just about me, like, showing off, like, oh, I'm good at games, which you know I am, but I want you guys to understand what you're seeing, why I'm doing the things I'm doing, how I'm doing the things I'm doing, and maybe inspire you to, to tackle the challenge yourself. There we are. With our stat points, I'm going to finish off Lip. Turns out, was a good idea to put stats into that, huh? And for the last three, I'm actually going to put it into spin. Because I really don't think I want to touch Ollie or Air just yet. If something in the next level will require some adjustments to my stats to pull something off, I can always readjust my stats as needed for that, but for now, I don't want to fix what isn't broken. And with that, we're switching over to the PS2 version for Boston.
Oh man, the timelines are converging. This is crazy. <laughs> this is the first true original level introduced in story mode, so they kept the design of the level very simple. You have the Boston Common Park area, surrounded by a street, and then buildings surrounding that. Now, even though we are revisiting this level late in classic mode, it's still pretty easy, especially because they didn't utilize much of the height in this level, with the exception of the secret tape and a stat point. That said, we are now going to make things complicated for ourselves. We got our first pigeon rail as we do our combo line here. And I'm going to land on the M instead of doing a ramp to ramp as intended so I can curve back around and get our first T barrel. Get back onto the combo line there. Grinding the right side of those planter sets will line up with that edge so you can keep that grind going to get the B. Getting up onto the fence for the O, and now we are spining into the ship here and finishing off our points. You may be able to see that there is another T-barrel on the ship, and we will be getting that just as soon as I'm done doing 900s. There we go. Snag that. Just break the mast for the hell of it. And pop out. Now, right in front of the ship, this fence has our next pigeon rail. So we just go ahead and grab that. We're going to do a ramp to ramp from the library to this construction scaffolding for our next T-barrel. And run across the street for T-barrel number four. Come over here to the front or, or the back of the Boston Common. And get kicked off the planter edge. Grab onto the wire. And grind for pigeon rail number three. And they're playing very fast and loose with what a rail is, apparently. Somehow I bailed on five points there, but that's fine. We wanted to get up the stairs for our last T-barrel. Then we just want to jump up and grab the edge of this mural, signboard, whatever, for one more pigeon rail. Now we are zooming back over to this corner of the level for the final pigeon rail. Could not incorporate it into the combo line. It's just a little bit out of the way here. Oh. There we are. You have to grind over the pigeons, because screw you. Right? And you know what? Ten seconds left. Let's go ahead and do our backflip over the Boston Common Stairs. Just for the heck of it. To get that out of the way. Usually do that for the second run, but, you know, I could use the extra time. That's fine. It's not a big thing. So the hardest part of that was just going a little bit out of the way for part of that combo line. You're supposed to do kind of like a very straight manual to the the wall and then do a ramp to ramp to hit the M. But I curved around to the right and came at it by coming down onto it and that turning messes up your manual a little bit then getting back into a manual, then getting back out of a manual for the T-barrel, back into a manual, it can screw up your balance pretty bad. Hence the focus mode. But there we go, let's go ahead and do run number two. We just have two goals, skate, and the secret tape, and then the five stat points. You may have seen the S hanging out over here. We just need to grind this rail and pop up over the entrance to get that. Then we are grinding the high rail on the side of the bank and going all the way around to a stat point hanging out over here. Then we can just do a couple of wall jumps to get that K. Now we are heading over to the hospital and you can see the A just on the edge of the overhang there. Grinding the edge of the coffee house, turning into a grind onto the wire across the street. And now we are on the triple set of buildings. Spine transferring to the church, getting a stat point along the way. And now we're just grinding this edge, which turns into grinding the wire where the secret tape is. Heading back to the hospital. And now we are going to grind 
this high rail and jumping to the edge of the library for another stat point. We're getting up here one last time, and this time, instead of jumping off, we are following the grind all the way across the power lines to where you can see a stat point over here. We'll get off the line by the construction site where the T is just hanging out waiting for us to grab it out of the air. And we'll come out this way. Over by the brownstone, you can see the E just hanging out over the entrance. So we'll snag that. And then, spine transfer into the Star Wars kid... Star Wars kids... room. And the last stat point was here. And you know what? You wanna see my moves? I do. I do. And I'll even join you. You can see my moves, too. Oh yeah, oh yeah, look at this. Oh, this is hot! Okay. A little bit of fan fiction for you, I guess. Anyway, <laughs> secret tape, skate, and the five stat points gotten. We'll finish off flip, and we'll put this one piddly point into lip balance. Now we'll jump back into the PSP version for the last time. Uh, say your goodbyes, send your cards, well wishes, don't be sad because it's over, smile because it happened. This is the final exclusive thing that we have to do. Just gotta beat Kyoto in classic mode. I found this level to be very easy to route. Uh, you can kind of break this level down into two sections, outside and inside. And the majority of the goals are just going to be associated with one of the two sections. With the exception of Skate, but that's really not a big deal. So yeah, uh, one run we do the outside stuff, or most of the outside stuff. And then the second run, we start inside. Okay, right off the bat we have the C for combo in front of us. I don't have a lot of time to explain, but we are getting the danger spine transfer gap over this entrance to get that C. There are lights along the side of the ramp, and there's one by itself lines up perfectly with that C. And I find getting off my board and getting this running start back onto my board while aiming for that light will get me up into the air without jumping, hit the spine transfer button, and I will clear that gap at the perfect height to always get that C. So I'm starting my combo here, because why not? Get off my board. Aim for the light. Perfect. Continue along. Get launched up here. Make sure you hit this edge, because it will continue along the power lines here. Spam some tricks for the multiplier. And cut this corner, land in the grind, and hit that O. That will keep our momentum going so that we can do a nice little 900 here. Maybe another one. Very nice. How about a beaver blast? Our points are looking perfect. In fact, we are done. We're definitely done. Beautiful. Now all I have to do is just skate around this outside area looking for signs to run into. And look for vending machines to stick or slap. And usually where you find one, the other will not be too far away. So here's a sign, and then across the street over here is a vending machine. And that's probably the furthest away in this level that one object is from another. The rest are pretty close by to each other, like you saw at the beginning, and like you're seeing right here, and you're going to keep seeing as we get the last couple ones. This one's a little bit tricky because the next sign is actually on the top of this footbridge here. And now back towards the skate park, there's our final sign, and there's our final vending machine. Whew, okay. If I didn't spend 30 seconds explaining things at the start, I would have had a lot more time and felt a lot more comfortable. I do this for you guys. I hope you know that. All right, our next run, we are going to be heading inside. 
Okay, so immediately turn around and start grinding up the escalator here. I'm gonna get off my board to slow my momentum and make sure I land on that S. Hop up here to get a stat point, and then start heading back the other way. Going to the bowl with the vent in it, and we're gonna grab that K. And then we're gonna try to line ourselves up with the air conditioners over there. And we're gonna use the vent to launch ourselves get off our board so that we can land on the air conditioner, jump, and there's a rail up here. And we use that to wall ride and get the tape, which is behind the Mega Beast Zero poster. And then just along the way at the end there, there's a stat point. And here's another stat point. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go up this ramp, get off my board, and pull myself backwards. Get that nice and easy. You can kind of see the A here. We're going to go on the blue rail, slow things down, get off my board, grab this ledge here, and there we are. Heading outside now. We've done everything inside. There's not too much left to do out here, though. So right down here in this little section, trying the wrong way for some reason, but yeah, there's the T. And then we're going to go into these doors onto the roof, launch up, get the E. And then above the door we came out of is another stat point. Then we're going to transfer up here. Here is a vent. Launch ourselves across the street to this building for our final stat point. Now we're coming back down. And we just have to do a McTwist over the fence into the skate park. And despite the instructions it gave, a McTwist is a McTwist. So it does not matter what your combination is to do it, just as long as you do it. Alright, beautiful. Everything is done nice and clean. We've done everything I believe there is to do in the PSP version of the game. The four exclusive levels, we did them in story mode, we did them in classic mode. Beautiful. With these stat points, we are just going to go ahead and finish off spin and start working on flip. Once again, don't want to touch air and ollie unless I need to, because I don't want to make things harder for myself on hitting these goals. So if there is something that I need to adjust my stats for later on, I always can. But for now, don't fix what ain't broken, baby. All right. So, from now on, just the PS2 version of the game. So long, Remix. You were actually surprisingly pretty fun. And I'll see you guys next time. Okay? Okay. Love ya. Bye-bye.